Amen. Let's sing it together. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to
hope of the church when Christ shall come with shout of acclamation and take me home what joy shall fill my song then I shall bow in humble adoration and there proclaim my God again as we worship him. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship his soul. Bless 
the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship Your holy name. I worship Your stay standing bless the Lord oh my soul and all that is within me bless his holy name in this place today I want you to turn for a few moments uh, to Philippians chapter 4. I'm uh, not going to be real, real long, and, uh, but I have something that was upon my heart that I want to share with you. And uh, this happens from time to time to all of us. And uh, this week I, I said to Pastor Jeff, actually, I came here Tuesday evening and I was praying, Lord, what do you want me to say and what do you want me to speak on this Sunday knowing it was my turn to preach and I came in here and I sat there not far from where Byron is to and I jotted down what the Lord was pouring into my heart and the scriptures and the points and everything and I walked out and I said to him as we left, I was like, you know what, God just spoke into my life and told me what, the, you know, what I was going to do on Sunday. So I thought and I came in here and uh, the next day and, uh, and as I began to sit in my office and begin to to think and ponder. Something else, I walked in, I was like, no, no, you have to say something else. So here we go this morning. Philippians chapter 4, and my title this morning, this morning is Finding Joy Where You Are. And the scripture, Paul wrote in Philippians, I'm just going to read a couple, uh, couple scriptures. You know them, you've heard them, and you've heard better preachers than I preach them. But Philippians 4 and 4 says, always be full of joy in the Lord. He said, again, I say rejoice. Let everyone see that you are considerate in all that you do. Remember, the Lord is coming soon. He says, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for what he has done. If you do this, you will experience God's peace, which is far more wonderful than the human mind can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and mind as you live in Christ Jesus. And my text today would come from verse number four, always be full of joy in the Lord today. And I say that to you today, that those of you that are here, those of you that will watch our live stream is not working today, but you will watch this a little bit later. You know what? There's joy in serving the Lord, amen. Finding peace and finding joy where you are this morning is so, so important today. And I thank God for his presence today. Okay. So... I said to the guys, we were all stood around the office there, I think it was Thursday, and I, and I was thinking as I was preparing in my mind what to say, you know what, people use words to describe every single one of us, okay? Every single one of us. So as I looked around in the office the other day, I, you know, I looked at Pastor Barry, and I, you know, I thought of a few words, and you know, kind, considerate. Looked at my wife, you know, beautiful, kind, whatever. I looked at Pastor Ryan and the three words, tall, dark, and handsome came to mind. And that wasn't him. That wasn't him. That was me I was thinking about. But, but we use words to describe one another. And he's kind and considerate, compassionate, like every one of you, I am sure. But in all seriousness, we use words in our everyday language to describe one another. You know, some may say that people are contrary. Maybe someone says that someone is nosy. Maybe someone says somebody's bossy. Maybe you're polite. Maybe you're considerate. Maybe you're not. You know, we could say that people are happy, sad, you know, lonely, you know, and, and so on and so forth, and people that we want to be around. You know, when it comes to our church family, we may say, as we look around this room, that people are godly. Maybe they're full of the Spirit. Maybe we may call them talented. Maybe we may say somebody has lots of faith. Maybe we say somebody worries too much. Maybe we say that, you know, they love the Lord, their God with all their heart. You know, may we, we may look at people and say that they're compassionate. They're full of faith, full of grace, 
full of the Spirit of God. And these are very good attributes that we all should have. But there's something special when we look at an individual. There's something special when we look at people, when we look at our neighbors, when we look across this vast audience today. There's something special when we're sitting in a company of people and we can spot out and say, you know what, I believe this person has the joy of the Lord in their life. I believe that we, when we can look at somebody and say, regardless of what comes their way, regardless of what problems, regardless of what issues, regardless of what life would throw at you, we can look at them and say, no matter what they face in their life, we can look at somebody and say, I believe they have the joy of the Lord flowing from their life. I believe it was last year. Forgive me if the date around sometime within the last year or so. And uh, myself and Tanya and Matthew, it was on a Friday. And, uh, you know, before Matthew went to school, oftentimes we would go to Gander and just spend the day every now and then. And, and we went to Gander this day, like some of you do. And we went to the mall. And I believe there's two restaurants in the mall. We usually eat at the Pizza Delight. But there's another spot, which is really good as well. And we happened to be walking around. We came that side. And all of a sudden, we heard this here. Oh, that's not loud. But knock, knock, knock on this glass. And you know how that got a bit of a reflection and it's hard to tell kind of who's in there. It's kind of like that, you know, a, a dark tint on that. And as I turned around and, you know, you're squinting through the window, who is in there? Who's that knocking on the glass? Is that Pastor Ryan or is that whoever? But, again, it was someone, a really good friend of ours. And he was sitting at a table with his mom and his sister. And uh, so, of course, we hadn't seen him for a while. So, we, you know, we kind of scooted around back in there, and they were like, oh, sit down with us, have lunch. And we were like, oh, no, we just had lunch. And anyway, but he wanted to talk with us, and he wanted to have a chat with us. And so, of course, we went up and gave our good friend a hug, and, you know, we talked and, and so on. And he was living out of this province for a while. And, you know, he chatted to us that day for, you know, maybe a half hour, 45 minutes, about one of the darkest times and most difficult moments in his life. He's about a year or two older than what we are. And, and he talked to us about the most difficult thing that he ever went through in his life. You see, about a month or so before we seen him there, he suddenly had lost his wife in death. Okay? And she died in her sleep at a very, very young age. And they were really, really good friends of ours. And, you know, we spent a lot of time with them over the years. He had suddenly lost his wife at a very, very young age. They were left with four children. And again, he had to find a way to continue in life and be there to help and support his children and his family at that moment. And we began to chat and we talked and so on and things came up. And finally, one of us asked a question like you would, you know, you know, how do you get through this moment? How do you get through each day? How do you get through the darkest days of your life? You know, when there's uncertainty, when there's anxiety, when there's moments when you want to throw in the towel. So again, that was the question. And you know, we weren't sure what was going on. You know, we kind of thought what he may say. And, and I believe that what he genuinely said, he genuinely meant. And the answer was probably something that every one of us at some point in our life has had to say. When we asked that question, how do you get through each day, my friend? You know, and he said these words... And I never forgot it. He said, I do it with the strength of the Lord. I do it with the peace of the Lord. And the Lord somehow, in my darkest days, in my darkest hours, when everything around me feels like it's collapsing, when the world seems like it's sinking in, he said, I do it through his strength. Why? Because he is my joy. He is my strength. It's not the worldly things. It's not worldly pleasures. But he is my joy. You know, when I sat there this week quietly, Pastor was gone somewhere. Barry was gone. Pastor Barry was gone somewhere. Tanya's quiet anyway. They're the ones who do all the talking, and I do my fair share, I believe. But it was sat there really quiet this morning. It was a lovely time, and I know why Pastor wants us to get, get out. I got a sermon to do, and I, and I sat there quietly in my office. I shut the door. I locked the door, and it was quiet. And I was pondering in my mind for a moment. I didn't lose my wife. I didn't have a tragic situation like that. And I was pondering the thought in my mind. You know, what in the world, in this life that we live, you know, what is it in this world and life that we live 
that's going to bring Andy Lane, that's going to bring you or my family or my friends true happiness and joy. True happiness and joy. And then I sat there and I realized and I made a quick note of it. This is my first sermon since Christmas time. This is my first you know, time up here since Christmas. You know, it, and that was a moment that a lot of us had been given a lot of nice things. Well, some of us. A lot of great things and a lot of great moments and a lot of great memories. Again, we got the gifts and we got the money and we had lots of extra food and so on. But, but those days are moved. Those days are over right now. And as I sat there in my office in the quiet and the still morning, I began to ask myself this question. Did these things, did these material things make me any happier? Did these material things give me any extra joy? Did these material things bring any blessing to my life? You know, maybe for a short moment, maybe for a season, maybe for a few moments, it was great to open it up and open up a new pack of socks and open up a new pair of gloves or whatever it is you got that day. But you know what? That's very fleeting. And you know what? The joy from getting a new pair of socks, I love socks. I'm obsessed with new socks. I wear new socks every day if my wife would let me. I love the, the feeling of a new pair of socks. You know what I'm saying? But it's very, very fleeting, and it don't last very long. And all of a sudden, we're sitting there, and you know what? And the socks are wore out, or the gloves are wore out, or we lost them or left them somewhere else. And I say to you today with all love and respect for everyone that's listening today, if we let our circumstance or our possessions or the things that we're giving dictate who I am and how much joy or the measure of joy that we have, you know what, I've come to realize somewhere along life's journey, if I let the material things that I have, if I let how I'm feeling, if I let my circumstance dictate how I feel today when I woke up, I'll never be truly happy. Because you know why? Money, it's good to have money, sure it is. It's good to have these material things. But one of these days, the money is gone and spent that someone gave me at Christmas time. The novelty is worn off. You know, I don't care what you've got. If it's a new car or a new truck or whatnot, after a week or two, the novelty is worn off. And that's all you have. If that's all that we have is these things, I pity today the person who feels that way. You know, if I woke up tomorrow knowing that the only thing that was going to make me happy and joyful in my lifetime was material things, you know what, again, I'm to be pitied today. But many of us today, many of you, many of us today have come to that realization that somewhere in this life, that real joy and real peace comes in our hearts and in our minds and we make up our mind and we know that beyond a shadow of a doubt that yesterday, today, tomorrow, we are doing our very best to live for God. You know, when we get up this morning, and yes, yesterday may have been a bad day. Yesterday you may have messed up, as pastor would often say. Yesterday you may have done things that you shouldn't have done. But today is a brand new day. When I woke up this morning, it was a brand new day. A fresh start, a fresh moment, a fresh time to do something right. And you know what? We can try, try each and every day to do our best for God. You know, it's evident as you read the scriptures, read the New Testament, read Paul's writing, that Paul doesn't let his present circumstance and situation determine how he should feel in his life. Again, like many other books that he had written. Imagine he wrote many of these books from prison, from a dungeon, from a jail cell, somewhere that we don't want to be. Again, he wrote many of these things, and many of Paul's writing include this one in the Philippians was written in a jail cell. Again, it wasn't because of the fact that he was some fancy preacher. It wasn't because of the fact that he was some fancy teacher with two or three degrees on the wall that he could write this with joy, but he could write this with joy because he knew what it was to follow Jesus Christ closely. Amen. You know, and it's... I like the fact that Paul here could look past his own messed up situation, circumstance. Again, he could look past his own heartache, his own pain, his own thing, you know, things that he was going through. And he could continue on in his journey, in his writings. He could continue to show the people of God his love and his dedication. 
His love and dedication to God, his love and dedication to the people who God was bringing him to lead. And he was, you know, he was leading them as a shepherd. Again, I don't know about you. You know, I haven't sat there writing in, in the jail. I haven't sat there writing doing these things. And I can't imagine for Paul that it was a barrel of fun. But he did it because he knew what, you know, he knew where his true joy was found today. He knew that it wasn't found in the worldly things but this is what sets people like Paul apart today. So many others, so many others that have gone on before us and after Paul. Again, he doesn't focus on the present circumstance, but rather he pens these words. He says, I want you to know, dear brothers and sisters, that everything that has happened to me has helped me spread the good. You talk about you talk about using something, a negative thing for a positive, you know, outcome? You know, glass half, the, half empty, half full? He says, I want you to know, you know, if that was most of us, we were like, oh, well, I'm just going to lie down here and die. Oh, well, it's over for me. I, I don't have the will to go on. But he says that everything, underline that, everything that has happened to me, all the good, all the bad, all the ugly, all the messed up stuff, Everything that has happened to me, he says, it has helped me spread the good news. It has helped me to you know, share my faith. It has helped me to, to speak to others, the people that are in the next prison next to me. And he says, because of going to jail, because of going to prison, many Christians, many of my own brothers and sisters have gained confidence in who they are, and they become more bold in telling others. They, they want to tell others because of everything that I've gone through. If that was me, I'd be like, you know what? I, I just look at how maybe, you know, if, uh, if I was in that jail, you know, again, I'd be like, you know what, Lord? Just take me. I, I, I don't want to go through this. I don't want to live through this, but not Paul. He's like, I want to share my faith with others. And again, no matter what life was handing Paul at that moment, he still managed to keep that positive outlook because he knew and understood that one of these days, you know what, we have a hope, amen? We have a hope that's not found in the world, but it's found through Jesus, through the good news. One of these days, every bit of suffering, every trial, every circumstance, everything that he's had to face is going to be worth it all. One of these days, he would stand before the sovereign Lord and he would hear him say, you know, well done. You, you've been a great servant, I, and I'm going to wipe away the tears and the battle scars that you've had to endure. And as you read, and we're going to get to my points now, as you read through the book of Philippians, there are several things that I want to point out to you today. There's a couple of different things, three things, I believe, that I want you to have a look at and uh, today in this place. And the first one is this here. Okay, it's our joy in suffering. You know, <laughs> Every one of us, and we're going to be honest, every one of us at some point or another has been through a situation, a circumstance, a, a trial, a heartache, a, a moment, a family situation. And, uh, and I know we've already talked a little bit about this this morning, you know, but I, but I want to just point this out today in this one question that I can't help but ask, you know, how is it that... Anybody who's been through what my friend, as I described to you earlier, and, and many of you right from this room, have had things in your life that maybe nobody else knows about. You know, how is it that you can be, you know, go through such a trial, such a heartache, such suffering, and still have joy and happiness in their life when you've been through so much? In verse 22 and 23, Paul says this here, he says, it would be better for me to die. He said, I'm torn between two desires. Sometimes I want to live, but sometimes I want to go to be with Christ. But if he dies, obviously there's no more pain, no more time in jail, punishment, suffering. He would go on then to his eternal rewards and end of the story and his life goes on. But Paul says this here. Always putting someone ahead of himself. Always thinking about, you know, eternal matters. Always thinking about the good of others around him. But Paul says, it's better if, for you if I stay. You know, he says, it's better for you. I want to be an encouragement to you. No matter what I'm going through, I want to help you. I want to encourage you. You know, how many people, you know, have we heard, you know, saying, you know what? 
Oh, I, 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 you know, it's better to be gone. It's better to be, you know, I'm sick of this. I'm sick of the heartaches, and I'd rather just die and have it over with. But, you know, in this lifetime, and, and, and I really, I've really come to, to understand this in my recent years, in this lifetime, and I wish it was different sometimes, but for every one of us, if we were to stand today, in this lifetime, every one of us has gone through something. Every one of us has had moments. Every one of us has had, you know, whether, I don't care whether it's something to do with your kids or your grandkids, yourself, your loved ones, a spouse, a, a neighbor, whoever that is, every one of us has had to, to suffer things. Me included and you included. Maybe you included that's going to watch this today as well. You know, but I believe that the difference for me and the difference for you than so many others, again, you, you talk to people, you work with people, the difference maker in my life today as I go through, you know, trials and tribulations is that, you know, and maybe for me, I don't know, when you get alone, and, and for me, I'm sometimes you're driving in the car, you're thinking, you're, maybe you're overthinking, you're, maybe you're anxious, and, you know, there's so much going on in your mind. And as I sit there sometimes, and, you, you know, you, you, we all, we're all just human, aren't we? And I'm just being real with you today. And sometimes you sit there and you're overwhelmed, and you're like, Lord, I don't know how I'm going to do this. And, you know, and then those songs, like, Lord, I never would have made it without you. I, you know, I need you, Lord, I need you. And you can sit there in the quietness of your home or your car and your vehicle, and you know that beyond a shadow of a doubt, you can speak to the Lord and say, Lord, I need you to help me today. I need you to be my portion today. I need you to be my strength today. I don't know how everybody else does it, but for the child of God, that's what makes the difference when we suffer, when we go through trials, and never in this lifetime, have we been promised that we won't go through difficult days, difficult moments, or difficult hours? But you know what? That's what makes the difference in our life. When we could call upon that name, when we could sing the words, you don't have to know how to pray, but all you have to know how to say is what? Jesus. Speak his name, and that's the difference maker. And that's what makes the difference in my life. You know what? I believe that both Jesus and Paul you know, people that knew what it was to suffer on this earth, knew what it was to have trials, knew what it was to go through difficult moments. I believe that they could look past their present circumstance. You know, they could look around this world. They could look around and they decided in their heart of hearts, you know, that the suffering, yes, you may have to endure. Yes, the suffering you may have to go through. You know, the suffering, maybe for some people it's a daily battle. But again, we can repeat these words that we have a hope that this world did not give us, that world cannot take from you. We have a hope today that one of these days for the child of God, for you and I today, we have a hope that nothing, nothing or nobody can take away from you today. So you wonder how we can go through the trials? You wonder how we can go through the tribulation? You know what? It's through God's strength. And then looking heavenward, knowing that we have a hope today, and that hope is found in Jesus Christ. Amen. Secondly, I'm going to move along. and Joy in our sacrifice. You know what? Sometimes in this life, and uh, sometimes in this life, it's, that's the reality. Paul said these words, Whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by Him. You know, whatever you do. And sometimes in this lifetime, the things that we do, the things that we're involved in, you know, it can be a sacrifice. You know, I was told one time, and, uh, and again, I, I probably shared this before, but, but I was told one time by a, by a lady, a godly lady in a, in a former place, and uh, just as a young Christian, and uh, again, she said these words, if, you know, even if you are the person who is allowed and given the privilege by God to pick the bubble gum off the, the seat of a, you know, the pew, the church pew. She said, do that unto the glory of God, amen. And I remember when we did a rent, remember this, Ray, when we did that rent, the rentals here in 2018? 
and we flipped a few. For those of you who are young people, shame on you for the gum that you chewed in this place. Because the seats were full of bubble gum, and we had to pick it off, or Ray did most of the work, I think, anyway. Sacrifice. Even if you are the person who's given the honor to pick the bubble gum off the seat, she said, do it in the name of the Lord and for the glory of God. And she said, that's what it is to be called a servant of the Most High God, doing things that nobody knows about, doing things that are not in the forefront, doing things that are hidden behind the scene. Sometimes God, not everyone, but sometimes God calls people like you and I to do things in the background. These are people who don't get the attention, don't get the pats on the back, aren't up here on the stage doing these things, aren't doing the things that are going to be noticed. Sometimes these people are doing the things behind the scenes that nobody else will ever know about. And yes, it is easy sometimes to look at people and say, you know what, I wish that I had that talent. I wish that I could speak like him. I wish that I could play the piano like him or do play the drums like somebody else. But again, Paul said these words today, and we can only base our teachings and our speaking off of the Scripture. Paul said, don't be selfish. Don't live to make a good impression on others, but be humble, thinking of others better than yourself. Don't think you're you know, above your own affairs, but be interested in others too and what they are doing. Do things for the glory of God in our sacrifice. You know, and sometimes it's easy and to get discouraged and to think, and you know what? Nobody sees this and nobody knows about this and nobody knows what I'm doing or stacking the chairs or cleaning a room. But I say to you today that no matter what we do, what we do in the, you know, whether it's up here or back there somewhere, whatever we do is done for the glory of God and it's done to expand his kingdom. So I encourage you today with that. Don't be worried about making a good impression about whatever we do. Maybe, I know a lot of you do this for sure, Maybe you're spending time praying for your pastors at home. You know, spending time in that prayer closet alone. Nobody else knows about that. Maybe, and I know this for sure as well, <coughs> maybe you're an individual who likes to do things for people, who likes to be there, support, help out, help with groceries, or whatever the case may be. You're doing it unto the glory of God. You know, so many people in this world, too many people in this world, are doing too many things, trying to make a good impression of themselves, thinking there's nothing better than to get attention for what I'm doing, thinking that there's nothing better. I look out for myself, and I look out for number one, <coughs> because nobody's going to worry about me. But I say to you today, take the humble road. There may be times that people work behind the scenes and do things, and they're working just as hard or harder than the next person. And it seems like maybe it's only a certain person that gets thanked for what they do. I don't know. But I say to you today, in all fairness and all with sincerity of heart today, whatever it is you do, friends, whatever it is that I do, whatever it is that you do, or maybe our family or friends do, whatever you do today, I want to encourage you to do it for the glory of God and the glory of God alone. The glory of God alone today. You know, live your life with joy and peace. Don't look, don't worry about it. Don't worry about man's applause today. Don't worry about what somebody else has to say, but I want to encourage you, young and old, do things for the approval of God today. Do things for God's approval upon your life. So, you know, when we have to sacrifice things, when we have to do things that maybe we don't want to do, when we have to do, you know, Again, things that maybe nobody else will do. Let's do it on for the glory of God and to the glory of God. Because again, we have that hope that one of these days we will stand before God and he will look at us and he will reward us not for what you know, we, we did in public or not for what we, you know, we boasted about, but he will reward us for the humble things that we've done and even given a cold cup of water in his name, amen. And third and last point is, it's our joy in serving God. And, you know, who would say today that it is a joy of serving God? I don't need a hand, but I know all of you would say that. There's a certain amount of joy 
that comes, and it's hard to explain at times. It's hard to tell others at times, but there's a joy when we can serve. There's a joy when we can do things for God's glory, amen? And that kind of goes along with the second point. Paul was making a statement here to the believers of that day to demonstrate where they would find real joy. And you know what? It does my heart good to look around and to see so many active volunteers in this place, young and old alike, that's willing to to set aside their time and set aside their hours, set aside their precious, valuable time and do things for God and serving Him. You know, Paul said this here. He said, I was a member of the Pharisees who demanded the strictest obedience to the Jewish law he said, in fact, I, was harshly, I harshly persecuted the church and obeyed the Jewish law so carefully that I was never accused of any fault. So again, here we have a guy that was doing things before his conversion. You know, he spent his life persecuting and harming Christians, and he didn't see any wrong in what he was doing. He didn't see any wrong with that. But if you stop and think for a moment, you know, how many of us have done things like this before we knew what it was to have a relationship with God? You know, many of us were ignorant to the fact of how we should live. Many of us had very little time for the church or the things of God or the people that associated themselves with the church. The last place that some of us wanted to be, and we all have different stories, but for me it was the case, the last place that I wanted to be on a Sunday morning was some boring church listening to some boring preacher's or some boring worship leader, no offense, you're not boring, but, you know, just using it for an illustration. But, you know, I didn't want to go and get connected with people. I, didn't wa- I wanted to be disconnected from the church, but like so many others, our lives were caught up in the worldly things, and I was like that. Again, as a teenager, my life was caught up in other things, and as a teen, I thought my life was not about church and not about faith or not about God. But as things begin to change in my life, as things begin begin to change in Paul's life, the things that you were once involved with, the worldly things, the worldly pleasures begin to finally fade away. You know, and I, and, and I like what Paul says here. He says, once I thought of these things were very important. I thought these worldly things were important. But he said, now I consider them worthless because of what Jesus Christ has done in my life. He said, now the things that I used to do, the things that I used to be involved with, which I thought was, oh my goodness, it was so important, I couldn't miss out on doing these things. Now for me, it's like, you know what? I don't want to look at that anymore. Why? Because of the change in my life, because of what Jesus has done. Yes, he said, everything is worthless compared with the priceless gain of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. He said, I have discarded, I have thrown it away, I have put it there somewhere in the past, counting as all as garbage so that I may have Christ serving God. You know what? The moment, and I remember the moment that I came to faith, came to, you know, started attending church, and I remember, and, and I wanted to be involved, do something, you know, and, and, you know, the pastor of the day is like, oh, no, no, you know, just relax, and we're going to mentor you and disciple you and help you and help you grow and so on. You know, and I ask you, isn't that the way that you feel today? That because of what God has done in your life, because of what God has done in your family's life, that everything else in this world seems like nothing compared to what it is to serve God, to what it is to love God, what it is to, you know, be a part of his church. The things that we used to count as so important, you know, now are worthless compared to serving him, to doing things behind the scenes, for sacrificing our time for him. You know, what's it really important to us today? I asked that question. You know, what should be important to us, to each of us today? I remember somewhere along the line, I believe, goes right back maybe to 2012, 2013, when I taught Pastor Ryan how to preach, and yeah, that's why he's so good now. I taught him everything he knows back then in Victoria. But I remember, in all seriousness, one good sermon that he had. Not sure if there's any more, but one good sermon. And it was at a funeral. He's, he's the best funeral preacher, too. These guys are really good. And uh, it was at a funeral for a dear brother that passed away. And uh, I remember the sermon very vividly. And he said this here. He said, he alluded to the fact 
I believe there was something but a dash. Uh, dash in the middle, remember that one? Yeah. And he, he alluded to the fact that, you know, we are on a journey in this lifetime. And there's a destination, and yes, we will end up in heaven one of these days. But the gist of the sermon is that, you know what, we should enjoy the ride. We should enjoy each day. We should enjoy our time serving God. We should enjoy everything, you know, that this life has to offer. We should enjoy it, and we should do it for the glory of God. Because you know what? Yes, one of these days we'll be in heaven, and maybe that day will be today. I don't know. But everything that we do from the moment that we're born to the moment that we die, everything in between ought to be done on the glory of God. And we should enjoy this life. You know, and we ought to be the happiest bunch. How many times have you heard us say we ought to have joy? Why? Because the Word of God says in Proverbs that the hope of righteousness brings joy. Amen? The hope of righteousness, the hope of God, the hope that we have, the hope that we live with brings joy. Again, serving God does not have to be painful. It does not have to be a chore. It doesn't have to be something that we endure painfully, but it should be a pleasure for every single one of us here today. Every single one of us here today. We wake up tomorrow, and everything that we consider good, and our possessions, and the belongings, and our, the things that we own is gone. Having the knowledge that you are saved, having the knowledge that you are forgiven, having the knowledge that you still have that blessed hope of the church and that one of these days you will be with him forever. And I, I, I kind of highlighted it here. That's where real joy comes from, amen. That's where our joy should come from today. You know, in our scripture today, Paul said to be full of joy in the Lord. And and in reality, no one else can give you. I can't buy that joy for you. I can't buy that peace for you. <coughs> I can't buy that happiness from you. But on the flip side, nobody can take it from you. Nobody can steal your joy today. God has placed that within us. God has placed a measure of joy within our lives today. And, and as I mentioned to you, my friend, and I go back to him as I get ready to conclude, the musicians can come back up and we're going to sing a song in a minute. My friend that I mentioned to you that went through the most darkest valley, the most difficult trial, the most difficult days that he ever faced, he didn't have a five-year plan. He didn't sit there and say, well, I'm going to do this, 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 and this. He didn't have a four-year plan or a three-year plan. He didn't probably even have a one-week plan for him. I'm going to assume that it was, you know what? Let's get up each day and get through this day with the help of God. And I believe that somewhere in his life he made up his mind and he said these words, the joy of the Lord is the strength. And that's what makes the difference in his life. And I want to say to you today, whether you're here or whether you're listening online, the joy and peace Again, that we, we talk about in this place, that joy is not something that money will get you. It's not something that I can wrap in a present and give to you today. I wish that I could. It's not something that comes from, you know, a church, a religious organization. But I still believe today the truth is this here. Yet it comes from spending quality time in the presence of God. Amen. It comes from praying. It comes from worshiping. It comes from without living a life of surrender to God and consecration to God. And if we don't do these things, oftentimes we'll be disappointed. But as we choose as individuals, again, hear me now today, as individual believers to allow the joy of God back into our lives to stay, no matter what comes our way, no matter what comes in our path from day to day, you know, people that we rub shoulders with you know, they're going to realize that, you know what, this person has something in their life. They have a, an attribute about them that maybe is missing from theirs. So I ask you, I ask you, I ask myself today, you know, in our suffering, in our sacrifice, in our serving, in our trials, in our tribulation, no matter what comes our way, you know, do we have that in our life? And if you don't, I pray today that God will give that back to you. There's a song that I haven't sung it here yet, but I play it often home in the car or whatnot, and it's called Firm Foundation. I don't know if any of you have heard that song. 
But I got the words up there, and I want you to look at them today. And it says this here, firm foundation is the name of the song. And it says, Christ is my firm foundation, the rock on which I stand. When everything around me is shaken, the songwriter says, I've never been more glad that I put my faith in Jesus because he's never let me down. He's faithful through generations, so why would he fail now? The songwriter goes on to say, he won't. He won't. But there's a second verse. And it says this here, and I, and I love this part. It says, I still got joy in chaos. When everything around me is, you know, is chaos, I still have joy. I've got peace that makes no sense. So I won't be going under. I'm not held by my own strength today. Because I built my life, amen. I built my life on Jesus. He's never let me down. He's faithful in every season, church. So why would he fail now? And he goes on to say these words, he won't. He won't. He won't fail. He won't fail you, and he won't fail me. Why? Because our life is built on him and him alone. Amen. Father, today in this place, you know every single one of us. You know our lives. You know what we need. You know what we don't need. And I pray for those that are listening online today. I pray for the youngest to the oldest. I pray for the weakest and the strongest today. I pray for those who have gone, had a good week and those who have had a bad week. In the name of Jesus, Lord, that your peace, your presence, your joy would fill their lives. Father, our joy, we know, is not found in anything of this world. But, Lord, our joy is found from you and in you. And I just pray, Lord, that something said here today Lord, we believe that you will not fail us. You have not failed us. You have been a good father. You have loved us, Lord. You have kept us, Lord. You have strengthened us when we've been weak today. But in your name, Lord, we cry out and say, Lord, we need you. We need you. We need you. And we love you. We love you. And we love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're going to stand together and uh, we're going to sing a song. And I'm just going to have to grab my guitar. And it's a song that we've sung here at times. And it uh, says, What gift of grace is Jesus my Redeemer? Amen. Do you consider him a gift today in your life? Amen. I believe that you do. Amen. There is no more of heaven now to give. He is my joy, my righteousness and freedom, my steadfast love my deep and boundless peace. To this I hold today in this place, my only hope is Jesus, for my life is wholly bound to his. Oh, how strange and divine, I can sing in this place today, all is mine, yet not I, Christ. but what? Through Christ in me. Amen. We're going to sing it. And I want you to listen to the words, and I want you to sing this, and hold with confidence today that you're his today, that you're his child today. No matter what you've been through, no matter what you're going through as, at this pre present moment, that he is yours and you are within his hand today. Let's sing it today in this place. What gift of grace is Jesus my Redeemer? There is no more for heaven now to give. He is my joy my righteousness and freedom my steadfast love my deep and boundless peace to this i hope my hope is only jesus for my life is wholly bound to his and oh how strange and divine i can sing all is my through Christ in me. The night is dark, but I am not forsaken. For by my side, the Savior, He will stay. I labor on in weakness and rejoicing. For in my need, his power is displayed. To this I hope 
my shepherd will defend me through the deepest valley he will lead oh the night and oh the night has been won and I still overcome yet not I but through Christ in me no fate I dread let's sing no fate I dread I know The future sure, the price it has been paid. For Jesus bled and suffered for my pardon. And he was raised to overthrow the grave. To this I hold, my sin has been defeated. Jesus now. Oh 